Good morning, Vietnam. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Saturday, May 8th, May 9th, Saturday, May 9th, 2020. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Wait for some people to show up. So over the last couple of weeks, we've done the uh, full swing part one, backswing, squat to square, post up. And then we'll continue with that with the pull versus the push. And today we're going to talk about the finish and the follow through, part through, part, part three. Hey, Bob, good morning. Yeah, Steve, let's get to work. You got it. We'll talk about that work, training versus playing. I, I see a lot of people playing golf. Yeah, I practiced a couple hours and I played three rounds. So you practice two hours and you played 15 hours, 15 hours. Well, we'll talk about that too. Um, magic of the right forearm. So part three is we're going to look at the finish and the follow through. Uh, I spoke with 17 of you guys this week, 17 awesome students got on my calendar. So that means there's probably about 20 to 30 more people that need to get on my calendar and let's do a check-in and make sure you're on right track and let's do a, an ass kicking and get you in the right direction. We're going to talk about the magic of the right forearm. I talk about that all the time. We'll talk about how much the elbow should bend in the, in the backswing. We'll talk about a drill that we're going to do 10, 10, 10, you know, Excalibur sword, 10 of those pulling down the left arm, 10 of those and pulling down both arms. We'll look at training versus playing. We'll look at block practice versus games and random practice. Uh, we'll look at the, the think box and the play box and how to get rid of what you've been training on and just start thinking about how to score and then having a trigger to go ahead and hit the shot and just get in the play box and shoot. And then putting and more putting. So let's, uh, hey, let's see, uh, Bob and Steve here, cool. So let's get started. So we talk about the full swing, you know, we're going to break it down. Block practice is when you learn something new with the motor control skill and you learn the exact skill how to do it. And you can block practice that for about three to five minutes. Any more than that, science has just shown that you're not going to get as much value as if you take that three to five minutes and understanding that skill and go around and do some type of random practice with it or some type of game. So block practice, three to five minutes, just to, do you know how to do this? You can do this for three minutes. Then you can do this for three minutes and get the stretch all in here and then extend your arm, your left arm. Here, and then just lift up your upper arm and stretch it out. That way you know where the left arm's going to be. In that first training, we talked about here, and then all the right arm does is it bends and externally rotates. There's never a reason for this elbow to fall further than 90 degrees. Tour professionals, from here, most people start their swing the right arm fully extended, about six degree bend. PGA Tours had like a 17, 17 degree bend. And then by the time they get back here, it finishes at about 79, 80. They don't ever get this elbow all the way back here. So, backswing, left arm elevates and cuts across the chest. Backswing, Elevates, cuts across the chest. You can lift your arm up a couple inches over your shoulder, and put it in front of your chest, and put it in front of your sternum, or just across it. That's what the elbow, that's what the left arm does. For Bob, it'd be your opposite arm. So here, that's the left arm. What does the right elbow do? It bends and externally rotates. Left arm, there's the right elbow. So the right elbow, the magic of the right forearm. This forearm rotates, it turns back and it rolls through. 
Now the, now the hand doesn't flip through, but since we're here, it rotates, rotates, externally rotates, and then it rolls through. So imagine the right forearm, and then you know pressure point number three, then you have that pressure right here. So we know how to do the backswing, we want to put the arm up there, and then we know how to do it with the club. Squat to square, when we're squatting to square, what are we squatting and what are we squaring? Well, since we blurred up all our weight back here, on our right glute, on our inside of our leg muscles are just in the ground, we've got to deliver that weight. We have about 60, 70, 80% of the weight in the back side, depends how much you use. You've got to get that towards the target side so I can drive my weight to the ball of my left foot. My knee has to go from back to forward. So I'm squatting. And now I'm square, my hips are square on the target line, and then I've got to post up, means I've got to take the ground forces that I put to my left toe, and I've got to lift it up, so that's the up move, and then I've got to pull and turn my hips. So I'm going to pull from the left side, and I'm going to push from the right side. So part two, we talked about squat, square, post up. Part two, I've got to pull, I've got to pull my hip, and I've got to push my right knee. So I'm going to pull and turn my hip, so I'm going to post up and turn, and I'm also going to pull and fire this lat muscle, this torso is turning, and I'm going to pull, since I'm pulling down, I'm going to pull my left arm and fling it right off. And so in training this, we get here, then here, then here, and then release. But really, this is where we stop. I still got weight in my back toe. I, don't, I, I think I finished my swing, but my hips, are, my hips are not at the target. They're still at second base person. And I look, oh yeah, I got a really good swing, but I, I never fully got my weight off my trail leg. I didn't turn my hips, and I didn't turn my torso. So we did a good job taking our back swing, loading up, squatting the square, posting up, and then releasing. That's how it is. We released. We didn't finish, and we didn't follow through. So I spoke with a lot of you guys this past week, and I already covered the 10-10-10 drill. I'm going to do it right now. Steve, if your right arm bends more than 90 degrees, left arm can't remain straight. It's a good observation, Steve, and you're right. Right arm elevation, external rotation, left arm across, matching together. They're still in front of my chest. My arms are still in front of my chest. My elbows bent at 8, 90 degrees or further. My elbows bent. Elbows bent. And now I would do my shoulder turn and, and elevate my left arm. A lot of guys get out here. Arms, arms in front of my chest. If you had to connect your thumbs and put them in front of here and externally rotate your right forearm, imagine your right forearm, 
and just elevate your left arm. Elevate your left arm over the shoulder. Keep your right arm in front of you, everything in front of your chest, and just elevate this left arm over your shoulder and turn. You will see that it, it has an appearance that my arms are more in front of my chest versus not in front of my chest. So with the palm of my hand here, pull, pull the shoulder behind my head. Pull the shoulder behind my head. I'm posted up, I'm, I'm, I'm loaded up on my right glute. Squat to square, post up. Club's gonna release. Finish and follow through. So this is the post up. This is where, this is where I am at post up in turn. This is also impact fix. So we talk about this over and over. Impact fix. This is a drill that we start right here and we pull X caliber sword out of the cement. And so the movement from squat to square and post up, remember I'm pushing off from the right and I'm thrusting up with the left leg and I'm pulling. So I'm I'm thrusting up with the left leg and pulling back. I'm pulling back. And so that's the, that's the motion with the lower body for impact fix. Is, but I also just want to, if I, did, if I just start with my hands and I pull this out of the ground, my legs have to get involved. Pull it out of the ground. So I'm at impact fix. Impact fix means my hips are already open. My hands are ready, right at impact. This is where my hands get impact. Your hips are open. Your shoulders are trailing behind. From here, you're going to do 10 of these in a row. But I want you to hold your finish for a count of two to train your body and brain that it's got to get off the back foot. It's got to make a full hip turn and even further shoulder turn, torso rotation. Because there's there's first base, second base. Most people finish the swing with their hips pointed at second base, but you need to get all the way around, past the target, all the way to shortstop and your shoulders to third base. Impact fix, this is where I start. I'm gonna pull this out of the ground and hold it for a count of two and make sure I get my weight off. Because when you take a swing, this is where you are, your weight's still on your back foot. I see this so many times where people, they're swinging their arms at the ball and they still have weight on their back foot. So you do 10 Excalibur swords on the ground. Then you take your back swing right to the top. And I'm going to have, if you notice my right elbow, I'm just going to have it helping the club from up here. And all I want to do is I want to pull straight down. 1,001, 1,002. Here. 1,001, 1,002. I'm letting the shaft hit my back. My hips have gone past the target line. My shoulders have gone towards their base. And I'm off my back foot. This is going to help you finish and follow through. You're not hitting that ball. You're hitting through the ball. Or you're swinging through the ball to finish and follow through. Up here, you're going to pull straight down. Now the distinction you have to have, the feel you have to have, is you're not pulling down, you're not pulling out. Most people, you have this, all this gap in here where you're, you're, you're pulling out. And I want you to get up here 
like you're going to hit your left knee. So here, I get up here. I want this angle, this left arm back. Here's the shoulder. This would be straight down on the shoulder. I want this angle nowhere near out here. I want it way back here. This is a drill that you're practicing, lock practice to train what it feels like. Since I'm not swinging on a vertical, I'm not doing this, I'm swinging on an inclined plane in a circle, and since my lower section's here, and my shoulders are here, there's so much room to swing through in this channel here. But I'm swinging on an inclined plane, and the club head is back here, the handle's back here. You guys are trying to get it out. I need to come down and exaggerate this move. Every single time, as long as I have my weight shift, every single time, I'll get that grass perfect every single time, because I'm still squatting the square, pushing up. But I'm also pulling down. So back swing, down swing, it's a down move, outward move, and then forward move. So you can train 10, 10, 10, you do 10 Excalibur swords in a row, then you do this, pull them straight down, 1,001, 1,002. Thousand one, thousand two. Down. Then you put the right arm on there. Main pressure's in the left hand. Right arm's just going to assist. You're not going to let the right arm overtake. I'm going to come down first. So when you come get the sense that the right elbow is going to come in here, even though if you look, it doesn't jam, doesn't do any of this, but that's the sensation we're trying to train to get you to do it right for all the years you've been doing it wrong. So here, pull down. So I let the right arm overtake. So I gotta let, loosen up my right grip, still I'm gonna pull down my left arm. Here, 1,001, 1,002, get your weight off your back foot. This is for the finish and fall through. You have to finish your swing. You have to finish your swing. Get your weight up here, get everything turned here. And the more times you do that, you know, if you do 10, 10, 10, do 20, 20, 20, do 30, 30, 30. And make it an exercise workout at the same time. The other thing, the more and more you do those upper body and lower body stretching protocols, the easier it is for you to do these things. Some of you don't have any external rotation standing up, and you don't have any in golf posture. Well, if you don't have any external rotation of shoulder, you're going to have some type of compensation in the swing. So that's the 10, 10, 10 drill. It's just going to keep on stacking on to what we've been doing to build a full swing from scratch. And it's repetition after repetition after repetition, but perfect repetition. And you don't need to do it more than three to five minutes of block practice. So I can do three minutes of 1,001 here, then there, then there. And then release and then finish. So now you can do the whole block practice here, squat the square, post up, finish. Instead of having X counters sore here, I can just do it from there, from here, like a hold this one. And that's it, thrust. So I'm, I'm thrusting up, I'm pushing from the right side, I'm pulling, I'm pulling from the left side, I'm using ground forces. Back swing, squat the square, post up, finish, release.
slow motion. Put a club in my hand. So now let's talk about training versus playing. We've all been in lockdown two months now. I never hit a ball. All I do is these drills here. I do the mass of the right forearm finesse drills, yardstick, and the putting arc. So a lot of you guys are going out there and playing. And great, I, I know you love golf. I know you love golf. We want to go and play. But it's so imperative that you train, you learn a new skill, train it over and over and over. So then, then now it's your new subconscious habit versus all the subconscious habits you've been playing with for all these years. So after you do part one, part two, and part three, and then you do the, the 10, 10, 10. Then you just go ahead, after you loosen it up and you got that feel down. So if you did this drill, impact face, Excalibur sword, left arm only, both arms, and you did that 30 times a day for 10 days, you're gonna have a new motor pattern built in. And then your last session, you do 10, 10, 10, you're all warmed up, all you do is put the ball away and just look at a target. And that's what I mean about going from training, we've been training to, to practice or playing. So we've all done this training, so now if I'm practicing, uh, I'm going to go to my, my think box of what I want to do. And then I've got, even in my practice, I've got to go through my trigger to go to my big box, so then I line up to the ball, and all I'm doing is I'm looking at the target, I'm lining up to the ball, I'm confirming the target, my one last practice swing, I'm looking at the target, and then I'm gonna send it. So the more times that you do these drills, and then you finish up with the 10, 10, 10, you're going to be so loose and ready to go that all you have to do now is go to your think box and what, what is your target when you're on the range? You're going to hit 10 balls randomly to different targets with the same club. It's fine. It's still random practice. You go to your practice swing, which is part of your think box and your target selection and club selection. And then you have to have a trigger, even on the practice range, where you're picking a target you're lining up to the target. You're confirming the target. And then you're going to send it. And then, since you're on the practice facility, you can relit it if it's a good swing. And you fix it if it was a bad swing. So we got training, we got practice and play. When you're practicing, you're still going to have a think box and a play box. When you're playing, you're still going to have a think box and a play box. When you're training, you're, you're just training. You're training a whole new motor pattern to teach the brain and the body to work in unison. And you do block practice three to five minutes to get what it feels like. Then you do something to practice with it. So, for example, we'll look at putting. Putting. So when you first started, you either got a putting arm, or you got two tees to use as a gate for your path. And so block practice, you would work on path for three minutes. The 
my posture, get my stance. In this drill, I'm just working on path. Lower body is silent, head is still. I'm just moving my triangle, arms, shoulders, and hands. I want to just feel what a good path looks like. I'm not looking at speed, I'm not looking at green rate, I'm just looking at can I swing this club on a consistent path? Tick tock. Same path. So again, magic of the right forearm. Here's the potting stroke. Finesse wedge. Distance wedge. Full swing. Potting stroke. Finesse wedge. Distance wedge. Full swing. Notice my right elbow. It does not bend. It's not up there. It, it barely bends to 70 degrees, 79 degrees. And I'm talking from the elbow, the bend. From the elbow, the bend degrees. Amateur golfers start with like a six degree bend in their elbow, their arms are really straight. In your full swing, fully straight, and then you bend it, and then you straighten it. Well, if you start where from the, from the elbow, it bent slightly about 70 degrees at a dress, that's where you start, and then when you take your back swing, get to about 70 to 80 degrees from the elbow bend, that's, that's, that's perfect. So the magic of the right forearm, right forearm and elbow bend, so now, putting, all I want to do is, can I get a good path? So three minutes a day, could you find three minutes out of your day to do this and hold it? Back swing and hold. Back swing and hold. Back swing and hold. Back swing and hold. Then you take away the training aid, and can you just do a good stroke? Back swing and hold. Back swing and hold. Training aids, use them for three minutes to understand how to do the correct movement. If you look at how quiet my body is up to my hands, right forearm, left forearm, and shoulder. How many times can you do this just to make sure that you're on the right path? You know, I, have, I hear a lot of guys in here that, oh man, my cutting still hasn't done anything. And I ask, well, how long can you, how many times can you roll off of this? Well, I haven't got one of those yet. Okay. There's other students in here that, well, you know, I did that the first week, but that was, you know, 16 weeks ago. Okay. And then you got students in here that can, you know, Roll this across there 27 times in a row. That's, that's number one, that's dedication. Number two, it's concentration. And number three, it's now a new skill set. You don't have to do 27. If you can do 10 in a row, you're going to be pretty good at hitting your line. I have not done this drill in a long time, but I'll be doing it um, in May because I had a hard time hitting my line yesterday. So I roll off a little bit to the left. I'm not worried about how far it rolls. I'm only worried about can I roll it across three feet. If I roll it across three feet, then my face is squared impact. So in about three or four rolls, I'm going to get feedback on what I need to adjust. Am I doing something with my grip? Is my grip pressure too tight? And 
And then you look at the eye line. Are my eyes lined up right? Let me put the eye line here and see if my pastor's jacked up. I want to find out why I'm not hitting my line. Because remember, if, if you don't have a, a, a square face and impact on a six foot putt, if it's close one degree, you're going to miss it to the left. Okay, so by putting the eye line there, by putting the eye line on there, I could, s those first three putts that I missed, my eyes were too far over the ball. And then I could see that, my eyes were too far over the ball, so I got a little bit better posture, I pulled my eyes back, I did the exact same stroke, and it rolled right across there. So training agents are there for, to give you feedback, and then you take the feedback, and then you, now that, now the block practice here is to make sure that I can do, you know, 10 in a row. So I can look at my eyes, I can take my stroke, there it is. So two in a row went down the line. So the first three or four I missed to the left. I was first thinking, well, it was my grip, but it wasn't. It was just that my eyes were too far over. So I fixed that, and I had two in a row. So I have to go and do eight more in a row, and then once I get back to eight more in a row, well then I know I'm still a good putter. I just had to, I lost my weight for a second. New motor skills. It's going to be new mo is it, is it, yeah, the new normal, yeah, correct. So you can't do a lot of green reading. That's okay. I mean, you can, you can since you've done the training on how to green read, once you get out, once you get out to the course, I mean, you guys typically play the same course over and over. So you can go out to a hole before you warm up on the practice screen, look at a hole 45 feet away, see, walk around and see what it looks like, and then just roll a ball across there and you'll see if you've got a good read. The real, the real, the real skill is distance control and direction. And this is why I'm on the eye line right here to make sure I got my good posture and then rolling that across here. So the guys that do 10, 17, 27, they don't get to 27 or 17 just by putting the ball on there and hitting it. They get to 27 17 because they put a ball on there, they line up to it, they concentrate, they focus, they go through the practice routine, they step up to it, and all their goal is to hit it down that line. You guys can do this, it's a simple drill. Hey Fuller, how you doing bud? So the putty dark, yardstick, eye line. You can, you can shoot 30 putts every single time you go out. 26, 25, 28, 27. There's no excuse to be shooting 32 or higher putts. No excuse. Now, if you look in the, 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 um, the Facebook group, I put a training out there December 21st. It's right in, it's in the announcements. It's right in the news feed here. I showed you exactly how to warm up with this and this. I showed you exactly how to set up 42 feet of distance. You can, if you can't find a double breaker, find 42 feet. If you can't find 40, find 30 feet. Find 24 feet. You can do 24 feet all day long with a big break. And this is now you can read the break every single time. You go 6 feet, 12 feet, 18, 24, 30, all the way to 36, 42, 48. And you can take your time, place it down at 6 foot, read the green, Go through your practice routine and stroke it to make it or make it a few inches past. Because if you're short, you got to start over. And if you're longer two feet, you're going to start over. Then you go down to 12 feet. You're out to 24 feet. You made three in a row. You're going to read the green. 
You're gonna place your ball down. You're still in your think box. Then you gotta have some type of trigger to get in your play box. And then you throw up the putt and you walk away making it or very, very close because you're training. So there's training, there's practice, and there's playing. When you're training, you're just training. When you're practicing or playing, you've always got to have a think box and a play box. Every single time. So when I tell you guys to go out and hit 10 balls in 30 minutes, you're like, oh, wow. That's a long time. No, it's only three minutes per ball. So find your last round you played that you wish you had 10 shots back and replay those shots. Go through your, go through your think box. What club are we going to use? What's the wind? How far is it? What kind of distance? What's the shape? What's the line? Now you've got that taken care of. Then in your think box, well, you've got to go through some type of practice swing. Do your practice swing. You can do your practice swing next to the ball. That feels really good. Then you've got to have a trigger to go into the play box. I'm looking for the fucking triple ball, triple 17 right now. I just want a, tri I want a triple 17. Now I'm going to the... I'm done with the mechanics of where's my foot, what's my elbow doing. That's the think box. Now I'm going to the play box. Triple 17. So I have a trigger and I'm looking out there at the triple 17, wherever it's at, wherever my target is, I'm going to find that target. I'm going to look at that target and I'm going to line up in the stance that I'm choosing to take, close, square, or open. I'm going to line up to that target. I'm going to confirm the target. I'm also going to take one, one last, because I always, I always make sure that when I'm doing my training, in my practice swing, where is my left arm? So I want to make sure if I'm doing a nine o'clock sandwich, I know where my left arm is. If I'm doing a, a full swing, I know exactly where my left arm is. So I want to make sure that when I'm in my play box, and I target, I line up to it, I confirm it, one last practice, so I get that feeling, I confirm it, and send it. And if it was a really good swing, I'm going to relive it. It was a bad swing, I'm going to fix it. So now, the reason to do this is I've had a really good practice swing, see the shape shot, the distance, the swing, and you continue to do that over and over and over, then you're going to get rid of all those bad programs that you can never get rid of, and you can write a whole new book, and the more and more time you train a new book, and you do it under pressure, you'll start to score well. And the pressure comes from random practice and games, random practice and games. Guys, have any questions so far? So we covered the 10 10 10 Excalibur sword, left arm pull down, both arm pull down. And this to really help you make sure that you finish and follow through. And we're, we're, we're rotating back and we're rotating, most people just stop here. We gotta get to here. Rotation. So we're swinging on an inclined plane. We're swinging on an inclined plane in a circle. And our legs, 
is the stability. This is the stability. And the lower your legs are, the more stable you are. So if you find that you're losing your balance, probably because you're not using your legs, your knees. And then we're rotating around our spine and since my right arm is not fully extended, fully extended, and since my right arm is below the left, that lowers this right side and causes a little bit of a spine tilt, which is perfect. And I just rotate, rotate, the shoulder around my spine. I'm not up here rotating this way. There's a slight, you can take your hip and just one inch bump to the target and you notice how it tilts my spine. So you get in your posture, get a little bump, and now I'm in good posture there, but I wanna make sure that I'm bumping, but I'm not putting my weight in my left leg. I'm still, I'm still on my right side. There's the bump. Now I have equal weight distributed on both feet, and then I just pull my shoulder back. Fully loaded, drive down, squat the square, post up, finish the ball. We do this five minutes a day block practice. And then once you squat the square and post it weight on that foot, then just make sure that you're Thrusting up, you're pulling, pulling from the left and pushing from the right knee, and then finish. And then let's finish up with the magic of the right forearm. How many times in a thousand times can you do this? A thousand times in a thousand times. From the elbow. When we talk about angle. We talk about the elbow angle. So there's an angle here. That's what we're talking about. There's no reason for the elbow to, to, to do this. There's no reason for the bicep, to, the, the arm to fully close. No reason whatsoever. So from the side view, my arm's not fully straight. It's probably about a 17 degree right about in there. And so a thousand times and a thousand times I can do this, here, here, and as I get fuller and fuller swing, then my my shoulders are gonna turn around my spine. There's the full swing. I get my right hand grip, I can sense my number three pressure point, I can sense the club head. This is what I want to do all day long. What I mean all day long, you can do this for five minutes a freaking day. Put down the remote control of the television. Now, what I want you to be cautious of is this here is the distance wedge distance. It could also be the finesse wedge distance, depending on what starts to downswing with the club head. If the club head is starting down, it's a finesse wedge sequence. But I want to make sure that you don't just start down and leave your body here. Everything has to go with it. So a lot of you guys are trying to just throw the club head and arms at the ball versus laser beam in front, 
Weight up, up here, club back here, up the plane toe up. There it is. You need to throw the club head, and just once you throw the club head, the arms and chest and everything else has to flow towards the target. Has to flow towards the target. And you'll notice my arms are bent. My arms are bent here and here. Here and here. It's like I'm taking hair going like this. I'm just taking this and just tossing it. Everything's moving together. Hands, club head first, then the arms and chest, and then the hips. But my arms are the elbow are kind of connected to my side because I want control and accuracy. So here's the sequence. Notice how my arms are staying connected to my body. Notice my left arm is getting to hip high, seven, seven, three, whatever it may be. There's the finesse wedge sequence right here. That was a distance wedge. Simply all I did is I still kept the same amount of backswing, but I started down not with the club head, but with my knee, my hips, and my shoulders, and my arms, but I really made sure that I got my arms away from my body and finished. So from finesse, spaghetti arms, to distance wedge, which is a full swing. It's a full finish. So you can train your brain to get your arm to here and do that five minutes a day. Here, And so this is the distance wedge. Now even though it feels like I'm going to 730, I know momentum's going to carry it further. All I care is about the feel, because if I have a 60-yard shot, I know my 60-yard shot is taking my lead arm to about there. I know the momentum's going to carry it further. But if I get to here and I train it here and here and here and here and here and I train it right here, and I hit 10 shots like that, on the range and get a known number, that's my number. So then you can go nine o'clock. You can bring your arm to nine o'clock. Do that 50 swings a day. Do that five minutes a day. And then you go out to the range and hit 10 shots with your wedge. Find the really good shots and get an average of the number. And now you get a known number. So matching the right forearm, Continue to do this. You gotta make sure that the lower body and the chest and the arms are involved. You cannot just do this. Up the plane toe up. You, you start the club head, drop the club head, just like that. Excuse me. So that's going to cover it. Uh, a lot of you guys have been on my calendar. I'd like to see more of you out there. Uh, if you haven't been on my calendar, you know who I am. <clears throat> you know who you are. Keep doing the stretches. Keep doing some working out. Stay healthy. Potting. Hunting, it's the easiest game in the world once you just block practice and train it. Block practice and train it, and then do the the, the randomness in the games by doing the six-foot ladder drill. Uh, do that training that I did in the group here. You can maximize green reading, distance control, and hitting your line in 30 minutes and be done with it. Do that once a week, once every two weeks for a refresher, once a month if you're really spot on. The last time I did that training was December 21st, and I noticed my putting was off yesterday. So I'm gonna do that training this week for sure when I get out to the course and it gets opened up. Because the course is still closed where I'm at, other than you know you can sneak on and whatnot. Finesse wedges, distance wedges, you guys can do this. Just focus on victory. Victory is Training the full game, one piece at a time, drilling it over and over, understanding pulling versus pushing. You know, part two is the whole pull versus push. You know, you're pulling down and you're pulling to the left side, but you're also pushing from the right and you're 
pushing and you're pushing and hitting from the from the right. So you gotta you gotta use both and be careful that one doesn't overtake. You know, you're trying to push from the right side. This is why we win the 10, 10, 10 to make sure that you're pulling down. And the moment you pull down, this number two power accumulator will, will release automatically. There's no effort that you need to do. You don't need to do anything other than once it gets to a certain point, centrifugal force will release it automatically. Centrifugal force will release it automatically. You just have to be in a good posture and in a good sequence and let the energy flow. This will release automatically. You guys have a good week. I'll see you uh, next Thursday. Get on my count if you need some help. I'll talk to you guys soon. Birdies, baby. Let's get some birdies.